Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm back being the pedo hunter that I have apparently become. Um, don't really know how I ended up here, but here I am. Also apologies if you hear noise, it's raining really hard on and off. I've discussed the problems with social media platforms and pedophilia and social media platforms having rules that might facilitate exchanges between pedophiles or facilitate the building of a community with pedophiles, which are equally troubling images, honestly. We've talked about it also with Instagram because we've seen that Instagram hasn't been very active in terms of deleting accounts that are owned by pedophiles. That being said, if you show a nipple, they're right on it. But if you're a pedophile, not that big of a problem. This is also an issue that we've seen on Twitter. I asked you guys on Twitter to tell me the dumbest reason you or someone you know got banned or suspended. I'll link that down below because some of the answers are truly mind-boggling. <laughs> On Twitter, we'll see a lot of the times conservative people getting banned, we'll see jokes getting people banned or suspended, we'll see silly interactions for some reason equating in suspension or even bans. And that is frustrating in and of itself, but it becomes far more frustrating when there are actual pedophile accounts. People who are clearly pedophiles, even have like that in their bio sometimes, or have handles that clearly indicate that they are sharing or looking for a certain type of content, which would be child pornography. Some of these Twitters go as far as to post the child pornography on their actual Twitter. Like, it's not like they'll link you to some shady website. They'll just post it, that openly. Like, that's how ineffective Twitter is at removing these people, that they just full on don't even hide it. Before I get into my conspiracy theories about pedophilia being normalized and all this stuff, not really a conspiracy kind of a fact, but anyway, a lot of people have been talking about Twitter's policies slash terms of service, talking about children. Okay, so this is the child sexual exploitation policy. Now this was written in March of 2019. So it says, we have a zero tolerance child sexual exploitation policy on Twitter. Sure, Jan. Okay. So they outline what is in violation of this policy, and I'll put that up, but I think all of us that have like half a brain cell know what would qualify as violating that policy. What's interesting is what is not a violation of this policy? And this is where it becomes, in my opinion, messy and straight up stupid. Discussions related to child sexual exploitation as a phenomenon or attraction towards minors are permitted, provided they don't promote or glorify child sexual exploitation in any way. Artistic depictions of nude minors in a non-sexualized context or setting may be permitted in a limited number of scenarios, example, works by internationally renowned artists that feature minors. Frankly, I kind of felt like I had a stroke reading this because I was like, why are these things not violations? So first of all, discussions related to child sexual exploitation as a phenomenon. That makes sense because it's like me talking about pedophiles isn't me being a pedophile, obviously, and it is an important topic, so I'm glad that they're not censoring the topic. But it's one of those topics that have to be discussed very carefully because it is a touchy subject. It does revolve around abuse and other terrible things that can't really be talked about lightheartedly and shouldn't be. I'm not in favor for censorship in any which way. At the same time, I'm also in no way in favor of giving pedophiles a platform to talk to each other and to discuss their feelings about that. That's therapy. So they say, discussions related to child sexual exploitation as a phenomenon or attraction towards minors are permitted. So you're allowed to discuss your attraction towards a minor as long as you're not promoting or glorifying sexual exploitation in any way. Unless you literally say, yes, I promote pedophilia and blah, blah, blah. Technically, you can skirt around these rules real easy because if you are a pedophile, much like the massive community of pedophiles on Twitter, you could just discuss the fact that you are attracted to minors at length. But as long as you don't say, hey, being attracted to minors is good, you can just talk about it. Like, Twitter is fine with this. Like, these are the people that Twitter's choosing to protect. Twitter has bots or people working to ban people for making a joke or calling JK Rowling a see you next Tuesday 
Those are priorities. If you're a pedophile, like, you know, that's that's not really at the top. Like, really, we're worried about banning people for making a joke. But if you're a pedophile, they're worried about you and the censorship of your word, and they're protecting you. It is absolutely contradictory, because let's look at what is a violation. Visual depictions of a child engaging in sexually explicit or suggestive acts, illustrated computer generated or other forms of realistic depictions of a human child in sexually explicit content or engaging in sexually explicit acts, sexualized commentaries about or directed at a known or unknown minor, links to third party sites that hold sexual exploitation material. Do you guys remember, I made a video, I think it was a couple of weeks ago now, where there was a hashtag for pedophiles to exchange content on Twitter, actual links to a third party website. So that was a violation, but of all like the tens of people that I saw doing that, I didn't see anyone getting suspended or banned for quite a while. So interesting that. The following behaviors are also not permitted. Sharing fantasies about or promoting engagement in sexual exploitation. Expressing a desire to obtain materials that feature child sexual exploitation, recruiting, advertising, or expressing an interest in a commercial sex act involving a child, or in harboring and or transporting a child for sexual purposes, sending sexually explicit media to a child, engaging or trying to engage a child in sexually explicit conversation, trying to obtain sexually explicit media from a child, or trying to engage a child in sexual activity through blackmail or other incentives, identifying alleged victims of childhood sexual exploitation by name or image. Frankly, I've seen all of this happen without looking for it. Like, even when I wasn't tracking the hashtags, even when I wasn't looking for the pedophiles, I saw a bunch of this shit. So it clearly is prevalent enough where if I don't even have to look for it and it's just there, but I don't understand. So people are allowed to talk about their attraction towards minors, but then you're not allowed to make sexualized commentaries about or directed at a known or unknown minor. So you discussing your attraction to a minor, isn't that making a sexualized commentary because you're talking about attraction, which in the pedophile's case is clearly sexual. It's not because of a child's personality. So... Can't really reconcile those two things. You guys can let me know if I'm missing some big monumental thing or if this is just absolutely ridiculous. I feel like this particular policy is protecting pedophiles and it's not protecting children because any type of discussion that's not, let's say, an academic discussion or, you know, a discussion that centers around the concept of pedophilia. So anything that's pretty much educational rather than pedophiles talking about minors they're attracted to or whatever. I don't know why any of those other situations would be protected. And again, I'm not for censorship, but this is a security matter, especially because there's so many young people on Twitter. I feel like it's a perfect place for people to fucking creep, especially because, as we now apparently know, it seems like Twitter is more concerned about defending pedophiles than actually children. But what I actually do want to underline here, and I really do think that pedophilia is really coming to this blurry threshold where it's starting to be normalized in the sense that a website's priority in no way at any time should ever be, oh well, what about the pedophiles? On social media, I'm not a child, granted, I don't have children, but on social media, one of my primary concerns in terms of security is for the children. So I think any social media platform, especially if they have people under 18, their first priority should be protecting them. Then comes everything else. But the fact that they've gone to the lengths of creating a policy that in some way shields people so they can still talk about being attracted to minors, but then they'll suspend you for a joke or, you know, an unpopular opinion, an unpopular political belief. Like, they'll suspend people for far less and far less damaging most of the time. Whereas these pedophiles are here sharing links, posting actual child pornography on fucking Twitter, like just out there. I don't understand. You guys can let me know what you think. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always. Let's get right into the fan art.